uh, our next speaker is Lin Yang. Uh, Lin Yang is an assistant professor at UCLA, and he's a Facebook Novi Research Fellow in the Reinforcement Learning Program. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, and thanks for uh, Facebook and Marie for giving me the fellowship. So here I'm talking about reinforcement learning again. So uh, recently, as uh, so we all know, that reinforcement learning has achieved the phenomenal in vehicle successes, as it can be used to solve, uh, let's say, play go game against the best human player, or use that to control, let's say, simple games like Atari or control robots like OpenAI arm. The next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so in practice, people like usually uh, receives like a huge state space in order to solve this problem when people use uh, neural networks to do function approximation. So here I'm talking about a particular uh, method for uh, reinforcement learning that's called Q learning. So basically, people use neural network to um, represent a particular function called Q function that measures how good a particular action is for reinforcement learning. Okay, so this uh, actually this method uh, has uh, um, has uh, been responsible for the huge um, empirical success. Next step, please. Uh, for instance, at uh, this DeepMind paper, this, they are using deep reinforcement learning, basically using a um, deep uh, network to represent the Q function. And then in many control tasks, tasks this um, this method has been achieving um, uh, superhuman performance. Uh, however, this uh, simple method um, has uh, some problems. The first problem is that it really requires a huge number of samples. For instance, with this simple Atari game, so the human beings, human beings can master the game in matters of minutes. However, this algorithm requires like uh, equivalently hundreds of hours of human experience in order to uh, play good. So on the other hand, because it's using some very uh, complex functions like uh, um, multi-layer neural networks, we hardly have any like theoretical guarantees, nor have uh, like we can have any uh, understanding of them. So, and um, this kind of algorithm can hardly be applied to other scenarios like risk-sensitive uh, uh, scenarios. Okay. So, uh, next slide, please. So, we really wanted to understand the, like the, uh, why and how and the when reinforcement uh, learning works with uh, with function approximation. So in order to do so, we uh, first consider very simple function approximation forms, that's the linear function approximation forms. So in this setting, we really like to have, a pro have been provided the features, for instance, for each uh, uh, state, which is the frame of pictures or videos, we can map that to, a, to be a simple vector, and then we can claim that, we can assume that the value function, the optimal control, the value function can be represented approximately well, a linear function approximation using these features. Okay. But the thing is that this thing, okay, next slide, please. This thing uh, usually provides very good guarantees for other types of uh, machine learning, for instance, in uh, supervised learning. As long as you have this combination, you can learn the uh, correct representation uh, with a very small number of samples. However, in reinforcement learning, it's not the case. In our recent paper, we show that this, uh, if you have the exact same uh, um, Structure is going to require uh, exponential samples, which explains in part the practical observation. Next slide, please. So, in order to handle this, we really need to design very good features with good guarantees. Basically, we're considering here is a structure that the this uh, environment have a structure like the factorization. Okay. So next slide, please. So with this kind of a representation, with this kind of a structure, we can design a very easy algorithm that's basically d squared to feed the Q value, and we can have a very good algorithm that can, that can work for uh, neural network works as well. Please, next slide. So with this algorithm, as you can see here, so this is a picture of this algorithm in practice. It really works well. And uh, more importantly, in special cases, as long as the function has a small complexity, in terms of the dimension, we can show that this algorithm probably solved the problem with a small number of samples. Okay. So that's the result. Thanks. 